Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Melandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining us is Lisa Mellett. She's the president of Barnes & Noble College, a division of Barnes & Noble Education, to tell us about how college students are adapting to digital learning platforms. This is such an interesting topic, Lisa. Thank you so much for joining us. And I would imagine that you know transforming to the higher education landscape and with online learning has been a challenge. Absolutely, Jill. These are certainly unprecedented times for higher education, um, but it's a space that has been experiencing high levels of change um, in terms of technology and students and faculty in recent years. Um, and as a leading provider in the space, we really had a front row seat to really the changes that are really driving um, a lot of what's happening in higher ed today. And there's really three key drivers to that, Jill. One is just the changing profile of a college student. So you had Gen Z entering campuses with a whole different set of need and expectations, as well as the rise of the non-traditional students. So non-traditional students that have jobs and, and childcare and other responsibilities outside of school represents almost 50% of students today on campuses. And the different needs and expectations for these cohorts is really driving um, universities to really look at the skill sets that they have on their campuses and the technology as they look at um, faculty and administration and other support services. And because of that, the um, demand for digital and the quicker acceleration has, of digital um, is really continuing to, um, to light the pathway for colleges and universities as they go forward. Let's talk about students and how ready they are for the online learning environment and some tips for engaging with them online. Absolutely. So through our research, we have a proprietary research platform called Barnes Noble College Insights, and we recently took a look at student response. So only around 35% of students were originally enrolled in online classes, so a very small percent, and now that is almost at 100%. And it's challenging in terms of, you know, how they feel in terms of their own readiness. I mean, certainly students today um, are under an enormous amount of stress. Stress Research that we've done shows that 89% of students today experience some level of anxiety because of the educational and social experiences of being on campus. So certainly not having those social interactions, not being part of the community, because college is so much more than what's happening in the classroom, but it's the support and engagement at a community level um, is, is really a critical factor that that universities need to be concerned about. You know, students are having difficulty maintaining discipline and focus when they're in a less rigid environment of being able to get up, go to class, and have the engagement and interactivity of being in the classroom. And then, of course, there's a real concern about equitable access for technology, right? Ensuring that all students have access to laptops and high-speed internet so that they can learn at the same pace. All right, let's talk about faculty. How um, are they prepared for it uh, in the university overall? And what are some of the keys to transition success as they go from an on-campus environment to virtually online? Absolutely, I mean, first of all, schools did a tremendous job quickly pivoting to online um, course delivery, but uh, in spite of that, 24% of students express doubts about whether, whether their college or university is truly prepared to make the switch to online learning. Um, for many faculty, it's their first time, their first experience teaching online classes. So, you know, faculty is such an important success factor for students, that mentor relationship, they are critically important in terms of determining student success. So faculty need to make sure that there are frequent check-in with students, um, that they're reaching out, they're getting feedback on how the delivery of the online course selection is going. Um, they also need to make sure that the university is sharing best practices. So what is working for the rest of the university can be integrated across the board. Um, and they need to make sure that they are building flexibility into the courses that they are delivering as well as the course material so it's gonna work for all students. All right, and let's wrap up here with what the summer and the fall may look like and how tech is gonna play a role in that and just higher education in general with the COVID-19 recovery. Absolutely, uh, the good news is there is so much, so many resources out there online 
that schools and students could tap into, but certainly virtual interactions are going to become the norm. And we are showing that 78% of students express it, it tend to increase their use of tools such as Skype or email or other services, chat platforms, AI assistance. Their students and faculty are going to continue to, to turn to a whole suite of digital tools to complement the online lectures and to really maximize what they're getting out of their study. We're also seeing students really turn to online digital study tools such as our Bartleby suite of services, which is an online learning platform, which can really help provide that 24-7 access to academic support. And again, just equitable access to the technology um, is going to be something critically important that schools are going to have to um, be sure that they are delivering. Yes, yeah, so Lisa, it sounds like even when we get to the other side of COVID-19, that the online presence, which was a trend even before we have to navigate this crisis, is something that's going to be here to stay for a while. Yeah, I think so. You know, schools are certainly working on their different scenario planning. So it's not just about, you know, if or when they'll reopen, but how are they going to reinvent themselves when they do to be better prepared to, uh, to write out this cycle? All right, Lisa, great. Thank you so much for joining us on Trade Talks. Thank you, Jill. All right, and thank you for joining me. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.